Cheers. You know it's you know it's nice and cold. That's Sholy. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. You know it's great on a Friday. Yeah, Sholy. A Sholy. I love you guys. <laughs> This is awesome. <laughs> we love you too, man. We were just yeah. discussing microbial activity before you arrived. Yeah. Hey, that's uh, <laughs> something you're comfortable with. I actually uh, experienced some microbial activity earlier today, oh. so it actually hopefully not the kind we were talking. I about. I know it helps me do my job so, sometimes, or actually, it is the cause of my job. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. and that's a that's that's a huge yeah. topic is that so many people associate the word bacteria. With, with a negative, exactly, the because negative. there's negative so many negative connotations. Well, there's so many negative strains of bacteria, and so many horrible things that it can do to us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've but been. But just like s- everything, there's a lot of good stuff. And I have no idea what y'all have been talking about, but that brings up a really interesting topic and something that I've been focusing on. Or, you know, I'll I'll, I'll pick little uh, pet pet projects, and then I'll research them. And uh, one of the things we've been looking at is looking at something called the microbiome. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that might have come up in discussion, maybe. And if it hasn't, it's certainly well worth the topic. (laughs) And so the (laughs) so the the microbiome um, is your what what physicians talk about as your the gut bacteria. I like to say our it's our internal fingerprint. It is. It's an internal fingerprint. And the cool thing about well, there's several cool things. Number one. Um, we're starting to con- consider it an actual organ inside the body. That's true. And so the uh, so just like your heart, your lungs, your intestines, your microbiome as a separate organ. Although having studied all of them, I think it might be the most complex one, mm-hmm. yeah. which is interesting to say. The heart. Uh, sorry for all the cardiologists out of, out there, but and you can get into the nth degree of how the heart works, but. The basis of it is, is it pumps things in and pumps it out. It keeps all the blood going. Uh, but the microbiome um, is really, uh, there's so many different little components to it, and each one of those can get out of whack. And so part of, uh, part of what I think, um, what, I, what I think the, and now I'm going to mess it up, kombucha? Yeah, yeah, kombucha. you got it. Say you right? Got it. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. I pronunciate like I'm from Camilla, Georgia. So. Yeah. Well, I Imagine think. that. <laughs> so, so, but the, uh, w- the interesting thing is that we don't think about, we have just as many bacteria cells inside of us as we do sure. human cells. Yeah, a very important More. part. Of well, they say 10 times, there's doctors now arguing it's about equal. Yeah. But just as many, I mean, we're, we're essentially just as bacteria as we are human. Right. Well, a very big part of the digestive system. Yeah. The urinary system, the general system, actually. Too, our brain so. and gut it relies on so many sensors and so many receptors and our parasympathetic yeah. system. And I was actually going to take that one step further because at some point in the last two billion years, we became um, symbiotic with another microbe, which is your mitochondria. Mm-hmm. And it actually has a complete, uh, a complete separate genetic uh, DNA structure and some RNA that goes just with that particular bug, which lives inside every single one of your cells and you only get them from your mother. Yeah. And so in a way, if you look at it, we, we actually are. So, you know, your microbiome, huh? Your mother. Once again, we mentioned it. Word to your mother. Word to your mother. (laughs) (laughs) Once again, the feminine. So the powerhouse, the powerhouse (laughs) of the cell, the mitochondria. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, well, the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondria, actually is an entity unto itself, which paired with eukaryotic cells, you know, several billion years ago, or I, I'm probably messing that up, hundred, no, it's probably, it's probably, the, billion it's probably billions. Yeah. So, so in, in essence, each cell has an extra little, has quite a few extra little uh, uh, tagalongs, and there's the mixture between what's going on in your gut what's going on with those tagalongs and what's going on with the cells that we have traditionally considered to be you. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. that has to me is blown my mind because the idea that we can start to understand what's going on with those things has really just happened in the last 10 years. And so we knew, I mean, we knew it existed, but they, and they mentioned it in medical school and we knew that there were mitochondrial disease, but we didn't know how, how, how in depth 
their function and dysfunction was affecting chronic disease as it stood that day. It was just there were these series of of um, very interesting problems that some people had, and we related it to, and we all knew that it was excellent genetics, so we related it back to mothers, and, and if they had a severe form, there wasn't much you could do about it. But, uh, but really, we look at now, kind of focusing on these things, the mitochondrial dysfunction is becoming more and more front standard in, um, in functional medicine and, and, and that sort of, those diseases. Wow. And it really just, re- it relies on uh, enough people saying we need to back this with money and we need to p- really put studies into this because I think that there was oh. talked about like you said it was talked about 25 30 years ago and there were people saying we need to learn more about this but there wasn't research there wasn't scientific research going into this so that you could actually have some substantial understanding and claims and, and backed up by yeah, actual clinical studies yeah yeah that's yeah. good Otherwise, there's just a bunch of California hippies out there telling you. It is. Hey, man. Like, <laughs> hey, everybody hold hands. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> but, but the, I mean. CBD oil. Will you pass me one of uh, those make delicious those two shows. powerhouse make, make of, those two. Uh, of two a shows. beer? Yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. But we, what, yeah, I mean, that's, and the interesting thing, too, is that our, our society is just beginning to understand we have been so obsessed with sanitizing and we have been so obsessed with being clean and we've been so obsessed with making sure that there's no bacteria in our lives. And now those studies are showing us, yeah. wait hey, a minute, there's well, actually, yeah, those kids that are growing up on farms. Oh, I know. Yeah. How interesting actually is that? have like uh, less asthma, less ADD, yeah. less, yes. you know, all our, these things. Our pediatrician actually told us the best thing that we could do for our kids was have like dogs and animals in the house. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let them get uh, exposed to. Yeah, that's exactly right. Five second rule: extend that to a ten second rule. Let that potato chip stay on the ground <laughs> another right. another few seconds. <laughs> no, dog, don't please don't quote let me the on dog that. Eat half of it. Responses. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it and allows it, your body to have the whole conversation. And this whole thing goes back to open uh, it right next to the mic. There you go. That's oh. just, that sounds so good. <laughs> it's my favorite part. And I'm not mixing anything but Sholey on Sholey on Sholey on Sholey. We don't we don't mix so. Did y'all know Avengers 4 uh, trailer came out today? Really? No. Just to be as random as I possibly can. I, like, I don't, see, a, I don't see movies. <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awesome. Look I at the head wait. on that beautiful yeah. bear. <clears throat> no, but, you know, full circle, we, uh, um, what we're trying to do with the farms and, um, and, and going back to the natural aspect of growing foods and looking back at how our ancestors lived, and then if you if you think about that as um, whole foods, and this is what, I, and as I've gotten more into this, I'm thoroughly convinced that a majority of the chronic disease. I mean, obviously, some of it is related to uh, genetics. You know, some of it is related to just bad luck or things. Bad luck is probably things that we don't understand how it's affecting Environmental. It from a, from a um, complex multivariate analysis. But most of it is we're super stressed out as a society. We don't get much. And that messes up hormonal response. We don't get enough sleep. And the biggest thing, and so if you can't affect the stress because everybody's got stress in their life and you can't affect the sleep because you're working at night or X, Y, Z, I mean, one thing that almost everybody can do is eat better. Mm -hmm. And so it's so interesting. They get two different responses from that. And we've gotten, I don't know, I hope this is on the subject, but I I, I like the, I like this, this, um, um, this concept because I will present, okay, I have a way that you can um, help your arterial or your venous disease uh, 80% of it's on you, okay? And I get two responses. One is, oh my gosh, doctor, thank you so much. Um, I didn't want another pill. I'm excited that there's something that I can, that I myself can take control of this. And the other one is, oh my God, you're going to take sugar away from me. <laughs> yeah. Well, people like sugar. People. <laughs> I can't eat I like simple sugar. carbohydrates and sugar every day of the week? No. Yeah. Can I fry it? You can yeah. fry it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, fry it. Yeah. Well, I tr- I mean, that, and that was why that was one of the reasons that I got into so into fermentation was I was on this very, um, you know, the first two or three years of living alone, not living with parents. I didn't live in a dorm. I lived alone in an apartment and going to college, doing my best to be healthy. 
and finding that balance in life. And I just got down this, you know, I went through this juicing phase and I went through the vegan phase and I went through the everything until I just came down to it's really all about whole foods, like you said, yeah. uh, really balance, you know, having the right amount of proteins and fats are great. But then having that fermented food aspect is so unbelievable. It is like this light switch gets turned on. It's like everything else you can be doing, you can be working very efficiently, but it's in dim lighting. And then all of a sudden the light switch goes on and you, your digestive system, like you said, is invigorated. Sure. All these different pathways and sensors and receptors in your body are functioning better. Mm. And, I mean, it is, it is so simple when people say, how do I get more energy or how do I what? Yeah, you can't always control how much stress you have in your life or how much you have to work. And you can control the three times a day that you put stuff in your mouth. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Your and lactobacillus you intake should. should increase your lactobacillus intake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not as catchy as you had no. me at lactobacillus, but we could put it on a shirt. Yeah. But it's true. I mean, I just it's it's a, it's a small change. And the the, in, the thing that I find really interesting is Big Pharma got behind this and said, we'll put it in a pill, you know. And so oh, yeah. there is so many probiotics, prebiotics, pro and pre combo, oh. nighttime biotic. I mean, everything that you can take. And That's a, really a, a so spoonful of sauerkraut is better than anything. Surely. So let's talk about probiotics a little bit. What what is your uh, what's your take on that? Well, the, uh, again, one of the things that we were just discussing is is the kind of what and if we're running over something you've already talked no, about no just no push on. no no it's That's totally good. new but I w what i was gonna say is i was gonna tie it into our um pickled versus fermented because there's so many foods that america now makes well the rest of the world but uh, specifically america said we can find a way to make this more efficiently instead of waiting for the cabbage to turn into sauerkraut we just dump vinegar on it because yeah. vinegar is already fermented somewhere else and it's already been pasteurized it's stable it's sour Probiotics are in fermented foods are these microorganisms that are flourishing, that are taking over, that are actually changing the pH of that environment that they're in, whether it's sauerkraut or pickle or yogurt or whatever, um, by multiplying. And those things in large numbers are really good for our system because even when they go into our system, they're not all going to live. You know, when you look at a little side of mm -hmm. a container and it says 800 I be, you know, whatever their little count is. Um, and they've started doing research specifically on those capsules that they are selling for $80 a bottle. And they'll open them up and they'll plate them and they'll give it 12 hours in the right conditions. Then you'll get some activity. But you can put a, a drop of pickle juice that's something that's actually been fermented in its natural environment, living, that hasn't been um, freeze dried and put into a pill. Mm -hmm. And it's like 10,000 times more active in oh, that sure. tablespoon. So does that mean that, and so this is a, this is a important point about, um, about those cultures. And so the, they do help, and this is just the medical part of it. They do help from, um, uh, they, they will repopulate, especially in the small intestine. If you've, if you've got small intestinal overgrowth mm -hmm. or you've got acute disease, then they will, then the live cultures of bacteria affect that, and everybody's seen it who's done this, and people get better. But what a, what a lot of people are going for is that idea of recolonization of the microbiome and really having an effect on that. And they haven't they haven't been shown to do that. And so, because there's and there's several theories about that. One is that the um, that you're continuing to do the bad things that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And so therefore it does recolonize, but you immediately putrefy it mm -hmm. for lack of a better, for yeah, lack of yeah. a better word. That and it's in, in an hostile it, environment yes, for it to you, continue. You don't, it, yeah, it, it can, uh, it can't take root. And so, so that's one. The other is exactly what you said, that there's not very many live colonies that actually get to the colon where it could take harbor and my question back is the spore forms. So its uh, its um, propagation form is probably the best to go through the um, stomach, small intestine, and actually get the colon and have some. My thought is is that if you're eating live cultures for these, which um, which you've already done, say pickles or or whatever, that's what you mentioned. 
that you probably have tons of that in there. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That, I don't. I don't actually know that. Well, and it's, it's. I'm trying to think of a quick analogy, but I mean, it's it's like saying. Um, you know, here's a group of happy children that already are coming to you with toys in their hands and they've been fed properly and they had a good night's rest last night. And can you babysit five children that are already uh, interacting with each other pleasantly and doing well? Mm -hmm. Or I'm delivering you five children that haven't been fed for 10 days, didn't sleep last night, have nothing to feed on or do, (laughs) you know, entertain them. And I mean, that's a very basic, silly, thrown together analogy of when you're consuming something that is living at that moment, it's not freeze dried, it's not without its own food, Mm -hmm. it is in its active natural state, and hopefully you're consuming it with a meal. Because what I always tell people is, like, I don't eat a Reuben every day, but I try to put sauerkraut a pickle pickle juice something fermented that is incorporated in almost every meal because there's naturally going to be fibers and prebiotics in that food Mm. so while you're consuming them all together it's not just popping a pill down into your stomach acid and hoping everything comes to life you forgot the corn (laughs) pee i I also (laughs) could definitely do some brats every day um no but it is it's you know it's consuming it with something that it is going to be able to flourish with and in yeah i think our society just wants uh a quick a a quick yeah and that's why isn't that your third type of patient that you're talking about your two types of patient then your third type of patient just want a a pill they can take to make everything better yeah i think that's a variant of the guy who's or girl who is uh pissed off that you know i'm taking their sugar away Yeah. yeah or i'm telling them and let's not make any, and this is the other thing, both patients will tell, knew exactly what I was going to do, which is so strange to me. They're like, I knew that was bad. <laughs> I mean, really. So, I mean. They it, didn't want to change. They did, yeah. So everybody sort of knows, I think has an intuition yeah. of the things that, that you're body's given this dopamine response on probably if I'm just continuing to feed that dopamine response constantly and suddenly that's 90% of what I'm eating it's probably not good because I mean you know everything in moderation variety um, anything, variety over anything over. pleasurable is bad <laughs> well there's <laughs> a term anything, there's <laughs> a term that's become very popular now but I always found I think it was one of the first thing that solidified in my mind as like I don't need to identify myself as on any sort of health plan, but it was the it was the idea or the concept of intuitive eating. And I first heard a dietitian say that. She said, "You don't have to count your macros. You don't have to be, you know, keto in ketogenic, you mm, know, you don't have right. to be this or that." She said, "It's called intuitive eating, and we all have it." Mm-hmm. And it's exactly what you're saying. It's if you go to Krispy Kreme and you're about to put it in your mouth and you have this little voice on your shoulder saying, "Oh, you're a bad girl. You really shouldn't be doing this right now." <laughs> That's called intuitive eating. You know, and when you're at the grocery store and you're walking down the aisle and you see these (laughs) gorgeous, luscious, dark green kale, you know, fronds, and you're thinking, that probably looks good for me. I mean, that's intuitive eating. That's actually (laughs) just listening to your gut and your body, and you can make those decisions without having to follow any sort of a health plan. I agree with that. I mean, but, I mean, at the end of the day, Krispy Kreme tastes a lot better than kale. (laughs) <laughs> and kale sponsored oh, by Krispy yeah. Kreme. Use <laughs> use code Krispy Kreme for ten percent off of your so, next <laughs> hashtag. So Krispy Rich Roll, um, Rich Roll is a guy I really like. He uh, he has a podcast with a ton of followers. There, there, um, and he. If I miss the, I saw seen a lot of his things. He was a fat lawyer. Okay. And he um, he I think he had a heart attack or he had a medical event that had to do with his lifestyle. And this is a guy who had, um, he went to an Ivy League school, he had done all the right things, he was exercising off and on, but his, his the stress associated with what he was doing, the eating terribly, he changed his whole life and became an ultra marathoner. Wow. So ultra, ultra athlete. But he mentioned the same thing that you're saying. So, and he went through a, a lot of iterations of, of his, his changes in health 
And <clears throat> one of the iterations was, okay, I'm going to do all of these nutraceuticals and I'm, you know, nothing but vitamins. And I'm also exercising 24 hours a day to he's cut out a lot of the vitamins and he's getting most of his vitamins through the food that he eats. And he talks about perceptive eating and the, the same idea that, that if you're staying and part of it is getting through that acute period of, I mean, it's, it's basically going through rehab. It's addiction. It is addiction. It's, and so you get through your, you get through your sugar cravings, mm -hmm. which can be worse, I think, than heroin. Um, just going from the responses just my patients have had. And I will say that, um, getting off it about a year of, I'm sober now a year of sugar, <laughs> of of sugar. refined <laughs> sugars, yeah, refined sugars, <laughs> refined sugars are gone. I'd like to you're, say that this is one year for me. Do they give you a coin I, no, I or need something? One. I got a, I got <laughs> a, I got a, I got a beer. It's like so, a so, but after about six to eight, maybe three months, something like that, six, six weeks, eight, uh, 10 weeks, something like that. My, my, um, my palate changed. Mm-hmm. And the things that I would eat sweets, but they didn't retrospectively, they weren't as sweet as they actually are. Yeah. And then once I'd gotten off of it for a while and I you know, I'd lost some weight and feeling better and X, Y, Z, I thought, I can't remember. It was probably a birthday or some event. I tasted, you know, I went back and I wasn't craving it, but it tasted better. It tasted like sweets, I think, should taste. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were, it was, um, and I don't remember what it was, donut or something, yeah. but it was, it was, and what was amazing to me is how sweet it is. And I thought, I thought that's what you were going to say, because I have the experience all the time where I taste something and I actually can't even stomach swallowing it. And it's not a holier, it's the sweet. healthier than thou thing. But yeah, I oh, put it in my mouth and, and I was like, it's, it's almost like a shock in my mouth that something oh, is so sweet. There's no doubt about it. And I, mean, I put salt on it. Then you just put a bunch of salt on it and then you can get it down. <laughs> but there's a, there's a concept in medicine called receptor downregulation. Yeah. And receptor downregulation is a real thing. And if you constantly do the same thing over and over and over again it'll get to where you habitually you basically don't taste it yeah. i mean your body's like, all right whatever Move been on. there done yep, that been there done that give me more yep elevate it or don't get yeah. do it at all or don't do it at all yeah. that's exactly right or you know or the other way to look at it is your body will continue to say more 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 because it's gotten into this craving mode and you have an addiction mode and well so, and our bodies are so i mean to tell you this to a doctor is like maybe it makes me feel silly, but our bodies are so complex. So when you have that sugar, c consistent sugar intake, there's so many things that, I mean, your yeast is overgrowth. Your, I mean, there's like so many other things that are going on in your body that when all those things start to self-regulate, your pH changes in your body. Mm -hmm. You taste everything differently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have the ability to, to probably pull out hops different i mean these esters and aromas like your sense your every your sensors are available again oh that's awesome I, I agree a hundred percent i think my palate now is more it's sensitive better. is yeah. better since doing that and I my agree. palate has actually changed yeah. and so um and and i not only do i not crave it as bad but it's like you said it's um it's a little bit of shock when you t taste some of these things that and i'm sure i mean let's face it the food industry knows knows exactly what they're doing to make sure that you continuously buy the same thing over and over again. I mean, it's not, a, it's not an, a, um, it's not a, an accident yeah. that, that they've increased the amount of simple sugars in there because we all, I mean, it, it's obviously something that's not found a lot in nature. And so when you do find it, your body's, your body's, tuned to make sure that nutrients or in this case a good source of energy uh, is taken up really quickly um, and so you know you crave it in but I get a shock from it and it's sort of like oh wow and but I don't eat as much anymore well and have so, you seen those studies the, the <clears throat> comparison between a child's brain on high fructose corn syrup versus an addict's brain on I can't remember what drug it is but yeah. I mean it's like all the same lobes and everything are just flaring and awake and going oh, and I'm throbbing. Sure. Yeah. And it's like, that's what we're doing. And, and we're, you know, habitually training that. And so everything in moderation and in that, with everything in moderation, mm -hmm. 
moderation means a lot less sugar and a lot more of these really healthy, microbiologically biodiverse foods. Yep. And that's where I think everybody needs to start taking baby steps too. And you'll be amazed. I mean, I think people will be ama- would be amazed. Do three months on low sugar fermented foods every day. And it's like nobody nobody could give you that sort of miracle pill. So there's a lot of, um, as I've read, like even just looking culturally, it looks like that almost every culture had some had their fermented foods associated with it. Yeah. Kim kimchi. Uh-huh. Is that, they get that right. Yeah. I'll mess up. I can mess up a name. Well, and we were, we were. I think <clears throat> just before you got here, we were saying like, what are some of the American most associated fermented foods in America. So there's sourdough, cheese, yogurt, those things. I mean, beer, but but mo- the wine, those things people all go, oh, yeah, that's fermented. And it might not be a common, like, party word, but it's something mm-hmm. that, you know, if you said what makes this product, people would know that yogurt has live cultures in it. They know that term. Um, what we don't know is that for so many years, so many things were fermented. Mm-hmm. You know, all of our sauerkrauts and pickles and olives and hot sauces and ketchups and mustards, like all these things were great grandmas putting salt on something, stirring it up and putting it in a dark corner for a couple of days. And sure. then all of a sudden it tasted a lot better. Mm-hmm. And every culture had that. Miso, you know, Tabasco sauce is still naturally fermented in big wooden barrels with salt packed on top. Oh, I didn't realize that's, Thank a, God that's a fermented thing. Yeah. Hot sauce, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And yeah. and traditionally... You knew that? <laughs> he's been deep diving <laughs> researching. He's been going down the deep diving. I read stuff this past week that you... You have no idea. What <laughs> you don't know where I've been, bro. <laughs> you don't down, know. I went down and came back from it the is, depths. This is rabbit hole of fermentation. Oh, but sure. yeah, kimchi, yeah. which is a fermented cabbage dish. My One of my favorites is actually sort of the, it's like the Latin almost version of kimchi, which is called crotito, and it's spicy. It's like jalapenos, mm. onions, and carrots oh, yum. fermented together. Sometimes they put cabbage in, sometimes they don't. And it's sour and it's spicy, and it tastes kind of almost like you're chewing salsa right because all the flavors are there so it's not a tortilla chip no you actually put it on you put it on top of something just like you would yeah like you would put it on top of a uh, pupusa or on top of a plate of beans and rice or or a tortilla chip or you could put on a tortilla chip that sounds good like salsa you like tortilla chips i love tortilla (laughs) chips (laughs) but yeah there's tons of things that people (laughs) around the world have fermented so how and you may not know this how old is this idea? Uh, predates our understanding of human existence. So when they're finding ceramic, you know, when, when people were very first starting, I mean, it definitely predates um, agrarian forms of actually planting because people were naturally fermenting mm-hmm. without knowing that they were fermenting. Mm-hmm. So they find ceramic vessels uh, that are from Africa and Egypt and all these different areas that have remnants in them that they can study, which blows my mind. I have no idea at what point they can identify that there is something in there that held fermented (laughs) things. But they know honey was actually the very first thing that humans, known to mankind, fermented. And Mm. it's a a B.C. year number. Yeah. So there was, you know, honey that was harvested, stored. Um, The cool thing, Eric and I have made a couple of batches of wild mead, which is if you actually take what they would do, because what they were doing at the time is to get the honey out of the hive, they were just crushing up everything. Bees, comb, everything. Mm. And all that flora that's in there and all that ambient bacteria, bees have it in their guts, Mm. is all going into this. So if you take, and this, (laughs) I, I hate saying this, but if you take honeycomb, which we have done, and smash and kill all the bees and smash up all the honeycomb and kill, bees yeah. and then put it into a That's bunch okay. of water they'll, they'll and make ferment more it. bees they make more bees they make more they bees. normally have a life cycle of 35 days so they can it's give me okay. some probiotics they give you give you probiotics. <laughs> but if okay. you if you kill all the bees and you smash up the honeycomb it actually makes far uh-huh. less alcohol it makes more lactic acid bacteria mm. yeah. it turns into the sour bubbly effervescent amazing thing that we were all drinking yeah, yeah. well so, and that was that was yeah and i agree and so i and that was my thought was 
Um, That's why bears are so healthy. Uh, bears? <laughs> yeah. They bears don't food. ferment it, though. They don't bears? have pots that they put <laughs> crunch in. Like Winnie into. the Pooh? I was just thinking that. Yeah. They smash the whole hive he up. Does. He's a smart kid. He, he had just, a bloated belly. I don't do. think he was healthy. <laughs> <laughs> he might have drank too much mead. <laughs> too much. Hey, boo boo. <laughs> hey, that's a different bear. That's a different bear. <laughs> <laughs> but that was my thought, too, that we, uh, it's so. Usually when you find something like that that's really, really good for us and pretty much good across human culture, that we've evolved with it. And so it's been around for enough years that we sort of have this relationship with it. And it probably was even there in nature. And who knows how far that goes back. So I agree with you 100%. It's it's so beneficial that it looks like, you know, even 15 20,000 years ago, we were probably on some level doing this. And my guess is that it's exactly like you said, we did it to store food um, because the food stores for longer periods, or they found that, who knows, they found a, a bear had had pushed in a honey honeycomb and it was still good, even though everything was dead. And then they were like, oh, well, we need to save this. And it propagated itself. Um, so things like that which uh which go back to our micro which go back to the idea of the microbiome and our relationship to all those bacteria and so uh so how cool is that and we were talking about what you know we're going to do out at the farm eventually and i hope you know i'm going to murder some bees out there at some point and <laughs> squish them down into some barrels so bad for our bees all <laughs> of a sudden well don't tell them that i mean this is multi-generations in, in the future <laughs> don't tell the bees don't tell the bees don't tell, the bees. Just told don't tell harris he loves his bees yeah, and eric yeah. Have you told Eric? He watches me squish them. Oh no! <laughs> sometimes you actually cries? sometimes you actually have to squish a queen <laughs> oh, because oh. you have to. You, you she, she's not she's not doing her job. She's not laying well. And there was a time that we were in our backyard and and he's and I had her in my hand and we both knew she wasn't laying and she would been checking her. And she hadn't been laying for weeks. And I had her between my finger. I mean, I had a glove on, but I had her between my fingers. And he's like, "You have to do it." do it and i could not squish this queen bee and i had to hand it to him to do <laughs> so he was actually the, the braver the bee killer <laughs> oh, i couldn't no. do it in that moment i was like she's so beautiful oh yeah. uh, you get to take her near inside <laughs> euthanizing the bee queen <laughs> euthanizing the bee queen that is crazy yeah. well we, we'll have animal another podcast it's another ev- another uh, another it is uh, it's animal a, husband it is there we go. okay time on this podcast. we're doing a wrap up <laughs> before you got here we did a quick recap of our first year Oh, and we awesome. did. We did. You know, quick recap. How I mean, it was quick, but it's and I had a really good, amazing. great intro. But I'm not gonna say it. Do it now. I'm just kidding. I yeah. really didn't. Do an outro. <laughs> do an outro. No, I mean, well, I, we it, never really did a, the like. This is the No Dams Given podcast. We didn't do that. Oh, we failed you there. Oh, we failed you there. Okay. No, I mean, this was a great year. This was I mean, the you know, No this, Dams Given podcast. This time, <laughs> this time last year, uh, the levee can crop. Eric anything. was coming over in a hurricane, and and you know, Santa 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 Rosa. He Santa actually Rosa did was, do that intro. Was he was on like, fire. this time last year, Santa Rosa. He he, he yeah. did do that intro. Anyway, yeah. You know, I think about the, all the things we've done this year. I mean, we've gone to all it's these different crazy. markets, and I've met all these different people, and and uh, it's been it's been really awesome. I mean, you know, I know what it's like. It's kind of crazy because you think about this can and how many. I mean, I'm gonna get all sentimental on you, but <laughs> how many people at this point have held this can in their hands and consumed something? that you had a vision of five years ago. Oh my gosh. I mean, and there's a picture on the back of this that represents our farm and the well and the, the you know, variety True. of stuff we're going. And it's like, it's pretty cool. Oh, it's super cool. It's pretty friggin' cool. And I mean, you know, and people talk about, and um, just talk about myself and, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> people talk about you. No, uh, well, entrepreneurism, okay. It's not about money. And I talk about this all the time. It's about creating something. And so entrepreneurs are are creative people and they just do it in a weird way. I mean, there's some creative people who draw and there's some creative people who make music. And entrepreneurs think about how we can make, how we can take our environment and the chaos that's in the environment and we can shape it a little bit and we can you know, in this case, we can make beer. And I won't say that it's not that a lot of luck doesn't go into it because, you know, my idea was a really small brewery out on our farm. Let's have a little added added benefit to the things that we're already doing out there. 
And then there's really this idea of collective consciousness. And that's a real thing because when the city found out about it, then they invested in it and the town of Albany itself has has adopted it Mm -hmm. that you wanted and you got it and it is um it's been successful and december looks like it's going to be the most successful month that we've had and um and this is your anniversary weekend this is one year ago today and i know i'm gonna start start crying it's awesome well i did something big on our anniversary what's that Whoa! Oh, no, I'm kidding. It's actually a temporary tattoo. tattoo. <laughs> she got a temporary tattoo is surely. That's she got a henna tattoo on the inside of her arm for everybody on radio. I that's tat- awesome. I tatted myself. Yeah, no. that's huge. Oh, wouldn't that be cool though if I put a surely tattoo on my arm? Oh my gosh! You put it the other way. So when Here's you, the thing. you flex your bicep, the well, surely would move. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. I'm just I'm just <laughs> feeling it out. I'm just seeing how I feel about it in case I really want a show bass on my arm. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. get a But it's our anniversary weekend. Yeah. Uh, We're going to celebrate. We're yeah. going to have a good time. We got lots of fun stuff planned. And, and it's amazing. You, yeah, thank you to the Levy. You know, I think this is our 8th or 10th or somewhere around there podcast and it's been a lot of fun. Um if nobody else likes listening to them, it's an audience of one. I've loved it. I mean, it's fun to talk to everybody, and uh, and uh, and I think we've put some good information out there. So if any, if anything else, that stuff's there, and uh, I get to hang out with my buddies. And yeah. Friends. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Shut it down. Shut it down. Cheers. 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 One year yeah. and one continuing year. on. Year. Yeah. Thank we'll you. We'll do. do